Swamp Life Reptiles, where conservation, captive breeding, and stewardship come together through education. What's going on, Swamp Squad? We're back with another video. And in today's video, we're going to go over some common uh, misconceptions with Diamondback Terrapins. See, on the internet, a lot of people have reached out and asked me questions about concentrics or nates, what's the difference. And so in today's video, we're gonna go over some of those common misconceptions so that anybody who keeps Diamondback Terrapins or wants to keep them can have a good basic foundation before making that decision. All right, first things first, let's go over some important information. Before we begin, you must understand that there are seven subspecies of the Diamondback Terrapin. All right, this is important because these subspecies all scientifically have the same genus and species. Okay, the only thing that is different is their subspecies. Now, the first main misconception we're gonna discuss today is the idea that the concentric diamondback terrapin is a subspecies, and that is false. The concentric name was given to a specific phenotype or a specific a visual a genetic gene, rather, um, of the diamondback terrapin. Only two of the subspecies that we know of today have this phenotype, the northern and the centrata, okay? Now, many people confuse centrata and concentric. That is not true. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of my animals as examples so we can discuss what's the difference. All right, so here we see this animal, this beautiful female diamondback terrapin. This is what we would consider or call a northern diamondback terrapin. Now, the northern diamondback terrapins, uh, as you can see, they have a lot of speckled um, spotting across their skin. The color of their shells varies dramatically from black to this lime green uh, kind of coloration to even a blue. Um, and it just varies dramatically, honestly. Now, the centrata or Carolina diamondback terrapin also has phenotypes that are very similar. And because of the animal trade, and also because of um, the collection of diamondback terrapins for turtle soup, those populations have become so intertwined that it's very hard to tell them apart a lot of times. So, most often in the pet trade, you're gonna see northern diamondback terrapins, okay? And they look like this. Now, there's a specific phenotype associated with northern diamondback terrapins in Carolina diamondback terrapins or the centrata. Here you will see this. This is the concentric diamondback terrapin, okay? I have three that we'll take a look at. This first female, as you can see, she has white skin with bold black spots. Typically when somebody is referring to a concentric diamondback terrapin, this is the kind of look you wanna see on the skin. Okay, bold patterns in comparison to the speckled pattern of the northern phenotype. Now, this is technically still a northern diamondback terrapin. Okay, it is just the concentric phenotype. Okay, her shell's a little rough, but typically you can kind of see here the concentric markings on the shell, okay, which are very different from the patterns on her shell. Here we have another example of a concentric diamondback terrapin. As you can see, all three of these are actually concentrics. All of them are just different enough that you can see, okay? All of them have some things in common. Check the bold patterns on the skin. You can see the markings on the shell, the concentric markings. All right, and in comparison to their northern sister, you can see why many people desire the concentric phenotypes more than just the traditional northern phenotype. Now, like I stated, concentric is not a subspecies. It's a phenotype. It's just a variation that you see naturally occurring. Okay, it can be genetically proven. There are northerns that produce concentrics. There are concentrics that produce northerns and vice versa. Okay, it's really based on your preference. I believe both are equally beautiful in their own way, and it just matters on what you think is important. Okay, remember, only the Carolina or Malachlemys terrapin 
centrata, and the northern subspecies, Malaclemys terrapin terrapin, come in a concentric phenotype. So if you see a concentric diamondback terrapin for sale, it's probably, or it is for sure, one of those two subspecies, all right? Next, we're gonna go ahead and talk about this misconception that I see a lot. People confusing concentric and ornate. Now, both words sound amazing when you add to a turtle's name, regardless of the turtle species. But a lot of people get these confused. And I've even seen people offer terrapins as ornate concentric blah, 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 blahs, which can happen. They can naturally, uh, you know, well, unnaturally reproduce with each other and create uh, what we'd call integrates. But specifically, there are some big differences between them. And so we're gonna go ahead and look at some variations of the ornate diamondback terrapin and then compare it to our concentrics. All right, so we transitioned to the garage and now we're gonna take a look at the ornate diamondback terrapins. You're gonna tell right away after having looked at those northern and concentrics, the differences between the ornate and the concentric diamondback terrapin. All right, so here we have a female ornate diamondback terrapin or scientifically known as Malaclemys terrapin macrospelota. The ornate diamondback terrapin is found along the Gulf Coast of Florida in and around to the panhandle, okay? Right away, you'll see some differences. The shell on the ornates is typically brown or blackish in color with the center of the scoop having a yellowish um, center. Now, one thing that I've noticed with ornates is there's some variation in terms of the color of their head and their skin. Here you'll see she has some pink-ish uh, lavender color cheeks, all right? I'm gonna show you some different ornates that I have and you can see the different colors of their heads. You'll notice that their skin is very different in terms of how the concentrics look. So let's take a look at some other this examples. This is a male ornate Dimeback Terrapin. He has a funky shell. He does have the flower back gene, which you can see right here coming out. It's that flowering pattern coming out of their scutes. He's actually a blue ornate. So you can see in his skin, he has a blue uh, coloration to his skin, which is different from the last ornate that I showed you, all right? Again, you'll see the spotting is very different from concentrics, okay? Still equally beautiful, all right? Let's take a look at another, another male. This is another ornate Dimeback Terrapin, but look at his skin, completely white on his head has some awesome spotting, but again, check out the color of the plastron. Ooh. And carapaces, carapace. <laughs> You'll see again, the shell is brown with those yellow center of the skews. All right. So I've shown you a white, I've shown you a blue, I've shown you one that I'd consider almost lavender. There's another ornate diamondback uh, female. She has the flower back gene and it is amazing on her. You can see how it really pops on her shell. And then her head, I would almost say she's lavender as well. And you can really see the differences between an ornate and a concentric. Yes, they can technically interbreed and create integrates, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at my last one I've been waiting All right, for. this is my last one. This is Pinky. As you can see, her head is very pink. Also an ornate Dimeback Terrapin. You can see the shell matches the same with the other ones. Brown with yellow centers to the scutes. Ornate Dimeback Terrapin. All right, so now let's go ahead and compare these. Here we have our ornate diamondback terrapin next to a concentric diamondback terrapin. They are very different in appearance, very different, okay? Concentric, again, is not a subspecies, not a subspecies. It is a phenotype. Here we have a normal northern diamondback terrapin and a concentric northern diamondback terrapin. So in the future, if you ever have any questions, I'm gonna put a link to the resource that I use. It's Jonathan Helms, Diamondback Terrapin World. It has a number of resources for people that keep Diamondback Terrapins or just wanna know more about the different subspecies, where they're found, and how to properly keep them. If you guys have any questions, be sure to reach out. 
And uh, don't forget to check out my buddy Dan, the Guppy Man's video, where he goes over all seven of the subspecies in depth. It's a great video, which is why I didn't want to do my own on the seven subspecies. All right, guys, we appreciate you guys for watching another video. Uh, make sure you enjoy uh, your special holiday. Make sure you have a happy turkey day and a happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you later. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to the channel. Bye, Squam Squad. Gosh, you're going to beat me to it every time? Yeah. All right, guys, bye, Swamp Squad. We'll see you next time. Bye. Next weekend. Next weekend. <laughs>